In this video, I'll be doing another old practice test of symbolization questions. So we'll be looking at seven questions that range from easy to difficult with a variety of tips and techniques. Even though Jenny's dad is Bob's best friend, comma, he's still a jerk. Lots of phrases that we recognize, even though, comma, we know that just means and. Uh, he's still a jerk, so who's a jerk? Well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so Jenny's dad is Jenny, the dad of, this is just D of A, Bob's best friend, the best friend of Bob, G of B. So the trick here is, of course, to realize that the word is, when we're talking about two individuals, it's just equality. So that's just equals G of B. And then you'd have to say, and he's still a jerk. Who's he? Well, it actually doesn't really matter. You can use either D of A or G of B because they, of course, are the same person. Uh, so you would just say, is a jerk. D of A. Um, two common mistakes here. The first is going to be bad bracket use. Some people will do this. Uh, don't do that. Some people will also put uh, extra brackets around this. Uh, don't do that. D, the jerk predicate, is a, a single place predicate, so we don't have an extra brackets around the inside. Now the last thing that people are likely to do is to say that uh, these things are people. Um, but that's not true, so you'd be tempted to use this A is a person predicate uh, for Jenny's dad or Bob's son or whatever, but it doesn't actually say that at all. Um, so yeah, you don't want to include that this thing is a person, because how do we know that Jenny isn't like a pig or something like that? We have no idea. So that's the only sort of actual trick here. There's this like little red herring predicate. Don't include it. Question two. Scientists that work for a government have a hard job. Key word here is that, so we're not using a non-restrictive clause. That is a, this is a actual restrictive clause. So the work for a government is part of the property of scientists. Uh, so this is actually uh, as straightforward as it comes when it's just standard predicate symbolization with multiplace. So uh, am I talking about all scientists or some scientists that work for a government? Uh, I hope you see that it is all scientists. So I'll say for everything, if you're a scientist, because it's a restrictive clause, uh, they'll work for a government, and I know that the government isn't mentioned in the property. I might as well just use a conjunction here, and, uh, and then I'm just going to invoke that they work for a government. Now, does do the scientists have to work for all governments or some government? Again, I hope you see that it's some. There is a government, uh, and uh, X works for this government. Uh, if this is the case, then they have a hard job. Uh, so then there is a job. You could use Y here again, because uh, the Y is uh, sort of free from this. But I'll switch to Z, because uh, probably that's what most of you will do. So I get there is a job that is hard. And of course, uh, my scientist has it. So A, oops, and A, who has it? X has Z. OK, just close the brackets, and we're done. Quick couple notes on this. Notice we know uh, lots about quantifier order. So this says uh, a scientist just works for generic government. It doesn't have to be the same government. That's pretty nice. And, but if you actually did symbolize it as saying there is a government and dot, 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 dot correctly, I'd actually have to give it to you. So this is, you know, you can sort of just see that once you start really paying attention to logical um, symbolization, English is ambiguous in a lot of cases. It's just that there's just a, such a natural interpretation we often don't notice. So you could interpret this, the uh, government, as being a specific one. It's possible, just unlikely that you would have done it on the first go. Okay, so so far so good. Here's question three. No one likes every politician. Um, this is sort of an odd question because it's so easy. I don't know why it features on this test. But uh, it doesn't matter. No one likes every politician. You can see it as it's not the case that there is something that's a person. Remember, whenever we use like the word one, we're talking about people. Uh, so anyone and no one. So it's not the case that there is a person. And what has the property that they like every politician? Um, so you would say, and it's not the case that there is a person such that for everything that's a politician, then X likes Y. Notice I did not stipulate that the politician is a person because the politician might not necessarily be a person. Uh, that's 
okay. So of course you could say uh, for every single person, then there is at least one politician. Uh, whoops, that they don't like. Something like this is okay. Lots of variants on this question. This is really straightforward. Um, a little too easy for question three. Question four, if anyone can fix Larry's computer, it's David's uncle's gardener. If anyone can fix Larry's computer, it's David's uncle's gardener. Uh, okay, so Larry's computer, uh, the computer of Larry, so that's C of A. And how do I say David's uncle's gardener? Uh, so the gardener of the uncle of David. So that takes care of those things. Uh, so if anyone can fix this, it's that. So for anything, member, because I say one, it's a person. Uh, hmm, that's weird. I have this Owens predicate. I guess that's okay. So I'll say for anything, if you're a person and you can fix, uh, I guess I, I mean to say that Larry's computer is owned by Larry. That's, that's a bit awkward. Um, so I'll say, and Larry's computer <clears throat> is owned by Larry. That's strange. Let's just stick with it. And um, where's the fix? X can fix Larry's computer. Then X actually equals this thing, G, D, D. So that's it. I just sort of, you know, have this weird D2 predicate here. Uh, I should probably just remove it. It doesn't really make that much sense. Um, anyway, the, the key thing here is that we just say then it equals this thing. And uh, there's a couple other sort of logical notes here. First of all, is it the case that David's uncle's gardener can fix Larry's computer? No, we didn't say that. Um, we just said uh, this. This is this is sort of tricky. I, I don't like this having this here. Um, some people might think that I'd actually have to separate it and say it separately and then say and to assert that there is a computer that Larry owns. That's probably more correct, but I'm just not going to worry about this owns predicate because it doesn't actually feature in the sentence at all. It's a bit weird. Um, you could say it's in some other way. You could say if you're not uh, David's uncle's gardener, then you can't fix Larry's computer. That's the contrapositive form. Perfectly fine. Question five. No one goes down the dirtiest slide at Great Wolf Lodge. This is actually a little trickier. This is a superlative, but it's a superlative where I'm not invoking a name. So this might be the first time that we've seen one of these. So I'm going to have to say that the property of this thing is that no one goes down it. But the first thing I'll have to do is define what it is. So in the past with superlative, we've had names like Anna is the fastest rower. Um, but here I actually have to just somehow symbolize the dirtiest slide of Great Wolf Lodge. So the first thing I'm going to have to note here is that there is something that is a slide and it's at uh, or in Great Wolf Lodge. So X is in G. Great. And I'm going to have to keep the scope open because I'm going to be talking about X throughout. Now I want to say the relational part. It's not just that there is a slide at Great Wolf Lodge. This slide is the dirtiest slide at Great Wolf Lodge. Which, so I can invoke the standard superlative now, except I'm going to use Y. So I'll use N for every slide that's at Great Wolf Lodge and is also not equal to the slide that I'm talking about, the original slide that I want to discuss, then um, X is dirtier than Y. Okay, so let's recap. This existential invokes that I'm talking about a specific slide at Great Wolf Lodge. This part says this specific slide at Great Wolf Lodge is also the dirtiest slide at Great Wolf Lodge. So X now refers entirely to the dirtiest slide at Great Wolf Lodge. And I want to say, and what does the dirtiest slide at Great Wolf Lodge have as a property? No one goes down. it. So I can now say, and it's not the case, that there, I'll, I'll use Z, that there is a person, oops, 
that there is a person uh, that goes down, um, Zed goes down that dirty slide. And so now I close the original bracket, and that's it. This part here could have re been replaced with the universal. You could have said for anything that's a person, then they don't go down the slide. That's obviously okay. Um, the key thing here is that the scope of this existential X is open the entire time, and we have to state the things I know about it, slide, Great Wolf Lodge, dirtiest, and then I invoke the property. And because the scope is open, this X over here refers to this entire stipulation over here. Good question. Question six. Steak, which goes well with red wine and avocados, are neither cheap nor environmentally friendly. So, of course, we have our non-restrictive clause. So we know that this is a property in, its, in of itself that I should just separate, and that's what I'll do. So I just want to say steak goes well with red wine. So when I say steak goes well with red wine, this is a straightforward, no negations, no paraphrase needed. Uh, am I talking about all steak or some steak? Well, I'm talking about all steak. So for anything, if you're steak, um, then the property is you go, go well with red wine. So this is a, a tough one, perhaps. Um, am I saying that there is some red wine that you go well with? Or am I saying that you go well with all red wine? Uh, well, if I sort of say it in this generic way, it is the case that you actually go well with all red wine. So for anything that is red wine, then the steak, all steaks go well with all red wine. And that is the intended part of this non-restrictive clause. So now I just have to symbolize the rest. Steak and avocados are neither cheap nor environmentally friendly. This is actually straightforward. This is just from single place. Um, so you could use X again if you wanted to and Y again if you wanted to. I'll just switch to W. Uh, so steak and avocados. So for anything, if you're a steak, of course, none of us are fooled by the non or by the cat dog clause anymore. So you all wrote uh, this, I'm sure. If you're a steak or an avocado, then you are neither uh, cheap nor environmentally friendly. CW, uh, neither nor, so that's disjunction, environmentally friendly. Now, there's lots of sort of different ways to symbolize this sentence. You could have split it up so it's an entire sentence about steak, an entire sentence about avocado. You could have done this in the De Morgans. In fact, you could have also done it in this interesting way where you put the steak property here, and then you could have said, and uh, the neither nor. And then you would have just written a singular sentence for the avocado. That also would have worked. So as long as you capture all the properties that we need to say about steak and avocados, we're good to go. Michael buys only shirts from online stores. Um, this seems straightforward, but it's actually sort of tricky. Uh, you just have to know what the word only is modifying, uh, and we need to really zero in on only here. Um, so what did, what is only modifying? Uh, well, it's, it's the buying of if Michael buys something from online sh stores, then that something must be shirts. So it's really saying that Michael doesn't buy anything from online stores other than shirts. So you can symbolize it in any sort of paraphrased way you want. In fact, those two ways I said are the, probably the most natural symbolizations. So the first way I said is if Michael buys anything from an online store, then it, it's got to be that it was a shirt. That's what it means for Michael buys only shirts from online stores. So be careful that you don't say that if Michael buys anything, it's a shirt from an online store. That's not true, because Michael can buy lots of things in person according to this uh, symbolization. So you need to first say what we're talking about are things that Michael buys from online stores, and then we restrict those things to shirts. Okay, so I don't need anything from Michael. Michael's just A. I need to say online store, no problem. Um, so how do I say he buys it? Do, it? Am I saying that he's buying it from a specific online store or from any or all, uh, sorry, all online stores? It's all uh, as in any online store. So for anything, if you are an online store, if you are store and you're online, I'll say then, um, 
What I now want to say is then, if Michael buys something from you, then your shirt, okay? So then for anything, uh, there you go. If Michael buys anything from an online store, then it turns out that why that thing that Michael bought is actually a shirt. Okay, there you go. So the only hard part about this is parsing. Notice that in these cases where I have these sort of like nested weird sort of claims, I really do like to say, here's the first subject, canonical form. Here's the second subject, canonical form. Um, this sort of just makes the presentation of it far simpler.